hello and welcome to my channel do you enjoy my content but have not yet subscribed what are you waiting for come on hit the subscribe button and click on the notification bell let's now get into the video in this video a palm color man shares a shocking part of slavery to black people now he poses a question to say why do they just teach people the history of slavery to as far back as the 16th to 17th century he goes on to further say it's because they don't want you to further back to go further back than that now because then you will actually find out the truth he emphasizes more on people having to understand why it is like this or why it has been like this now he talks about a lot of things in this video uh, issues of worse slavery really started from islamic slavery ashkenazi everything guys it's a whole lot and i'm urging you to just listen and watch this video to the very end here's his video why ask the bloody question why are they only teaching you the history of slavery as far back as the 16th and the 17th century why are they only going that far back because they don't want you to go farther back than that because then you'll actually find out the truth. But from the 16th and 17th century, we'll teach you about slavery. You've got to go further back. And you've got to understand and, and question, why did they do this without, throughout the whole of America, in all the public schools? Why do they only go back as far as the 16th and the 17th century to talk about slavery? We've got to go further back than that. Because Islam, Islam designed infernal slavery. And then the Ashkenazi Khazars, those who say they are Jews and are not, are the ones that marketed it. And the regal nomads exiled from the kingdom of Judah were the main recipients of it at the hands of the indigenous black Africans. Because you've got to understand, the regal class of the house of Judah came down from Israel and they came into the land of the black Africans. And the black Africans resented the regal class of the house of Judah in their land because they had laws, they had customs, they had civility. And they were a regal class that came down into Africa. And later on, it was the Ashkenazi, the Islamic slave traders as well, that then worked together with the indigenous black Africans to enslave the regal house of Judah. This is what we've got to understand, but you've got to go back before the 16th century to understand the roots of it. So we're going to see as we dig into this where this slavery came from because it was really a system that was very, very well crafted. There was Islamic masters and there were white Ashkenazi Khazar ship owners. There were the buyers and the sellers. And they're not going to fill you in on all of this, but really you've got a four-tier system. Number one. You have the nomads that were exiled from the kingdom of Judah. Number two, you had indigenous black African hunters that resented the regal row nomads that had come into their territory with their own customs, with their own laws that were different and would not assimilate into their tribal culture they were their own tribe they were the regal house of judah and number three you had islamic trappers that worked with the indigenous black africans to trap the regal negro house of judah and then you had them sell them to the ashkenazi ship merchants along with many portuguese and British Ashkenazi. So again, we've got the four tier system. Number one, we have the regal grow nomadic class that are exiled from the kingdom of Judah. They are their own royal tribe in Africa. 
Then, number two, we have the native black African trackers. They're going to track them down. And number three, we have the Islamic trappers. Because between 650 of the Common Era and 1900 of the Common Era, 10 to 20 million people were enslaved by the Arab slave traders. Over 20 million enslaved Africans were delivered through the Trans-Sahara route to the Islamic world. Can you get your head around that? That's not even touching the Americas. Over 80 million more blacks died at the hands of Islam en route. And number four, we have Ashkenazi Khazar Jewish ship merchants. And of course, the Portuguese and the British Ashkenazi were the main buyers. Islam and the Ashkenazi, those that say that they are Jews and are not, were the main sellers. Does that make sense? You've got to dig into this further. We have the two tiers right there. We have the Islamic trappers, and then we have the Ashkenazi ship merchants. You see, the Romans, they were globalist slavers. They were globalists then and now. They just migrated to Gaul, Ashkenazi, the sellers, and Britain, the British, of course, the buyers. German Jewry and British Jewry, where have they gone to? Well, they've descended upon Wall Street, upon Hollywood and Washington, D.C., as we see it right now, just to fuel this cataclysmic final war of globalism, which is none other than renaming colonialism. And this is the world that you and I live in. And I'm so sick and tired of these talking heads when it comes to the election time, trying to enslave everybody and cause racial division to try and get the votes. When ultimately, if Israel would just wake up to who's enslaving us, regardless of our skin color, he says what? I am Yahweh your Elohim that delivered you from slavery. We all need to get out from underneath this slavery system and we need to come together as Joseph's multicolored Malkitzedic cloak. But we've got to help identify who are our Jewish brothers and where are our Jewish brothers as the whole house of Israel comes together. Because Islam and the Slavic regions, I mean, where do we get these names? Yugoslavia, of course. Czechoslovakia, Slovakia, these were all regions of bestial slavery that eventually arrived on the African continent. These were areas where Islam invented infernal slavery up in those Slavic regions that then eventually arrived on the African continent and the black region of Judah were the recipients of it. But not only black Judah, but Europeans were even napped by the Arabs and the Ashkenazi traders during the war or peace periods in the medieval times. By the 16th century, the transatlantic slave trade had already begun, meaning that slavery was in existence before the 16th to 17th century, forcibly bringing Africans to the newly dis uh, discovered Americas. It had existed in Africa as it did elsewhere in the world for centuries prior to the 16th, and many socially stratified African societies kept slaves for domestic work. Now, the sheer number of slaves traded across the Atlantic, however, was unprecedented as over 11 million Africans were brought to the Americas and the Caribbean over a period of four centuries. Driven by commercial interest, the slave trade peaked the 18th century with the expansion of American plantation production and continued until the mid-19th century. While Europeans primarily profited from the slave trade, West African kingdoms like Dahomey also grew wealth and powerful by selling captives of war. By the 18th century, 
century, the slave trade began to wane as the abolitionist movement grew. Now, those who survived the forced migration and the notorious Middle Passage brought their beliefs and cultural practices in the world. Now, the history of slavery spans many cultures, nationalities, and religions from ancient times to the present day. Likewise, its victims have come from many different ethnicities and religious groups. The social, economic, and legal positions of enslaved people have differed vastly in different systems of slavery in different times and places. Slavery has been found in some hunter-gatherer populations, particularly as hereditary slavery, but the conditions of agriculture with increasing social and economic complexity offer greater opportunity for material slavery. It was institutionalized by the time the first civilizations emerged, such as Sama and Mesopotamia, which date back as far as uh, 3500 BC. It features in the Mesopotamian Code, which refers to it as an established institution. Now, S was widespread in the ancient world in Europe, Asia, the Middle East, and Africa. It became less common throughout Europe during the early Middle Ages. Although it continued to be practiced in some areas, both Christians and Muslims captured and enslaved each other during a uh, centuries of warfare in the mediterranean and europe islamic slavery encompassed mainly western africa india and europe from the 7th to the 20th century now it's thought that as many people were enslaved in the eastern slave trade as in the atlantic slave trade it's ironic that when the atlantic slave trade was abolished the eastern trade expanded suggesting that for some africans eastern trade ex, uh, for some africans the abolition of the atlantic trade didn't lead to freedom but merely changed um, their slave destination now it is also said to be misleading to use phrases such as islamic slavery and muslim slave trade even though slavery existed in many Muslim uh, cultures at various times since the Atlantic slave trade is not called a Christian slave trade. Slavery was common in pre-Islamic times and accepted by many ancient legal systems and it continued under Islam. Now people commented on this video and said, speaking facts, leaving no cramps. I've been screaming this for years. America only gives us their history feel free to share your thoughts and let's hear what you think about slavery before the 16th to 7th uh, to 17th century if you check uh, carefully on google or wherever if you try to check about this information and just try to go back and see if you can find any information uh, about slavery before the 16th to 7th uh, to the 17th century trust me you won't find like proper information on that so if you have information kindly share with us in the comment uh, section below thank you for watching and see you in my next video as i bring you another interesting video